Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at the Buzz Toys The White Wolf, aka Henry Cavill's Witcher based off his appearance in the Netflix Witcher series. Now I got mine as a review sample from Buzz Toys organised through 1-6 kit. As always, this is not a promotional video, this is a review. All opinions are 100% my own. I have not been told to only say good things. I have popped the link to Kit's website in the description below for your reference purposes only. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new 1-6 scale figure review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, it is simple but very classy. We've got an image of Henry Cavill's Witcher up front in grayscale with a touch of warmth to it. Down below, the White Wolf as well as a Buzz Toys logo. They did make their logo red, which number one helps it stand out, and number two gives me a Netflix vibe, which I think is what they were going for. A pop of red on an otherwise very black and white box is never a bad thing. On the side, the White Wolf once more, another Buzz Toys logo, as well as some splashes or maybe some blood there's something there and I like the way it looks I just don't quite know what it is. Around the back you can tell that Buzz Toys put a lot of effort into their box art which isn't surprising considering it did take a while to come out I am glad he's here now though. Around the back we have a map then the white wolf as well as a side profile shot of Henry Cavill as the Witcher once more plus warnings and legal information. Ooh, okay Buzz Toys, I see you. This is the image from the back of the box, and I'm glad it uses the slip cover because I really like it. And a quote over the top that says, evil is evil. Lesser, greater, milling, it's all the same. And another Buzz Toys logo. Right up top, we are greeted with an instruction sheet that lets us know how to attach his necklace and how to put the cloak on. Seems pretty straightforward. Now, my favourite season of The Witcher was actually the first one. And the same thing goes for my favourite look for The Witcher, his first season outfit I don't think was topped. Having all the rivets and all of that extra detail around the front, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just really glad that Buzz Toys decided to make the first season look for Witcher. First in hand impressions? So far so good, I like the weight of this guy in hand and all the stuff that's going on with the outfit. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first. It's not great news unfortunately folks, it's literally just a plain ass black oval style display base with an adjustable crotch grabber. I would have at the very least liked to have seen a logo up on top or a nameplate, not just nothing. And considering this company is also another company that's known for their elaborate gorgeous diorama style display bases, that's actually what I would have liked to have seen here. This display base is only just barely better than giving us nothing at all. You can spruce it up though if you did want to add this massive monster claw with the glossy nails and the speckling on the rough looking surface of the skin with the vein work and the bloody stump at the bottom onto the display base as some set dressing, then it starts to make the display base look a little bit more visually interesting. Not because of the base itself, more so because of this monster claw. There's even some wrinkling on the underside that looks like nasty baggy looking skin. You do get his cloak which is made from this very plush microfiber feeling material. It's fully wired, there's metal hardware holding it in place, and there's just all this dirt and grime down the bottom making this look completely nasty, dirty and weathered. I can't wait to try this out on him. Do get some smaller accessories, one being his Witcher necklace, and the wolf is nicely sculpted, it's also quite metallic. This part is plastic, whereas the chain is real metal. And his bag of coins, which does look like he's grabbed onto it and it's been cinched up the top, so in his hand it's going to look pretty convincing. See, I told you, it looks like he's grabbed onto it, and I didn't realise at first that there's this super fine texture on top of it, with washers in the crevices. I don't want to go into too much detail right now about the head sculpts, we'll save that for when we actually install them on the body, but you do get two different options. This one, just the neutral expression, the skin tone looks good but a little bit tan for me, and the hair does have a decent amount of sculpted texture and detail. Versus this one, this is post the Witcher Potion. You can see his eyes are glossy black, the veins extending up over his eyebrows, 
and his teeth just look glorious. They're nice and glossy and very well sculpted and painted, with washes in between each individual tooth. Uh, I did not realise his swords were real die-cast metal. You do get both of them, one that's supposed to be silver to kill monsters and one that's just normal. They aren't all that prickly, so I don't think you have to worry about spiking yourself. They are very shiny and chrome, though. The hilt, the cross guard, has some detail sculpted into the surface for this one, and the handle is nice and ivory with some shading over the top. This one is my personal favourite, though. It's got some inscriptions on the blade for the black section. You can see I'm getting fingerprints absolutely everywhere. This little gold pendant around the front and some textured detail on the grip. Then you get this bag to store the swords if you don't want them on his back. It is made of pleather, which I'm worried about. You can open it up and there are some straps in there that do hold the swords in place nice and securely. Then all of this hardware I do believe is real die-cast metal. It all feels cold to the touch. Oh, but I'm pretty sure we're all going to have him holding his sword, or at the very least having it on his back. You do get a full array of hands ranging from closed fists, and there's some wrinkling sculpted into the surface, but no real paint to speak of, they're just cast in black plastic. You also get a sign-using hand with three fingers sticking out, and the detail here is just next level, plus the gripping hand holding the bag that you've already seen and two open palm hands already installed on him. What we are going to do now, though, is get the Witcher himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Well, except for the sword. I did want to pop that in the sheath on his back just to complete the look. And of course, I went with my favourite of the two. And I popped his necklace on for the same reason. Now that he's standing here in front of us, I'm pretty impressed. But he's also not... Perfect. There are a couple of things that we need to discuss, starting off with the proportions. They have used very long ankle extenders, so his legs are massive. But they're also not chonky enough. I think if you switch out the ankle extenders for slightly smaller ones, the proportions will become a little bit more believable. Right now, I think that's what's throwing it off for me. Everything else I love, the look of the outfit, how it drapes and hugs the body, how broad he is at the shoulders, and even that head sculpt. From a distance, I can tell exactly who that is. It's Henry Cavill as the Witcher. This is my preferred look for his Witcher. Having all of the studs on the outfit, it just adds so much visual interest. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Geralt's first head sculpt. We do have to try out the significantly angriest sculpt, and we will in just a second. The likeness is pretty good here, but maybe not perfect. From certain angles, like right there, I can definitely see it, whereas from others, I do tend to lose it a little. It's not to say that it doesn't look like Henry Cavill, though. You can tell exactly who this is supposed to be. And then there's just a really nice level of detail. The five o'clock shadow is fully sculpted. You can feel that texture on the surface. Then they've hit it with a wash to bring out all that detail. You've got skin texture, some crow's feet, and a furrowed brow. So when you tilt his head down, he just looks mean as hell. They've also made the eyes very vibrant yellow, so they do stand out on the head sculpt. The hairline is very nicely sculpted, and the paint applications are pretty clean all the way around. But they have gone a little bit heavy with the wash, in my opinion. I would have liked for it to have been a touch more subtle. As it stands, it does accentuate all of the sculpted detail for the hair texture, a touch too much. I think the hair should read a little bit lighter than it actually does now. Now you can adjust the head sculpt up and down because it's just on a cylindrical neck connector. So if you want it to sit a little bit higher like this, you can. Or if you want to push it down to make him look a little bit more mean and menacing, totally doable. And my personal preference is this head sculpt ain't coming off. I cannot get over how good this looks. It is full of life and personality. Having the scrunched up skin around his nose and the veins over his eyes, then painting the eyes themselves in glossy black and them being as reflective as they are, it all works together to make for a magnificent looking head sculpt. My favourite detail here though is the teeth. They're inserted behind the sculpt. So there is an actual gap between the teeth and the mouth itself, leaving room for a very natural looking shadow. Now the neck is once again adjustable so you can slide this up and down, but I think that the gridded teeth head sculpt is a little bit smaller in scale. 
so it does sit higher on the neck connector and I do think that helps with proportions. And the neck itself does have some vein work and a decent level of skin texture on it. The only complaint I have here is that you can see the seam line over the top of the head. And you can see it with this one too. It's not a deal breaker for me, it's just something to be aware of. Depending on the angle of how you have him posed, you may see that seam. Back to the neutral head and I have popped his cloak on, which is very easy to do. You take his head off, slide the cloak on, hop the head back on and the hair will hold it in position. There are wires running down the front and there is some speckling of dirt and grime on the bottom. Going with this suede-like microfiber texture as we discussed in the accessory segment, I think was the right call. It feels about right to me. And it drapes well in 1-6 scale. Now with the cloak on you don't have access to the sheath for the sword and that's okay. He's supposed to carry the swords in his bag when you have the cloak on. You can get him to wear the hood but it's a bit of a challenge. You have to wedge his hair behind the hood on the inside and then you can bring it over the top and because it's wired you can shape it. I'm not going to bother with this, as we know black fabric is a recipe for disaster on 1-6 scale head sculpts. Because chances are if you leave this on him for a long period of time, you might end up staining the head sculpt thanks to this robe. And nobody wants that, especially when the head sculpts are this good. Around the back he does have his sheath slash scabbard back here, depending on what you want to call it. It is made of this textured but brittle feeling plastic which I do find interesting. When you slide either of his two swords into it because it can only accommodate one sword at a time versus the video game version of the Witcher who often had two swords on his back, it's a little bit loose with this particular sword and it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom which I think was by design so that around the front you can see the cross guard of the sword and the design work poking out from over his shoulder. And I'm not mad at that because I already told you I really like the way this sword looks. So showing it off in the scabbard, yeah that kind of does work for me. The other sword is a touch more secure sliding it in here. But it does still stick out from around the front, you can still see it poking out from over his shoulder. Underneath the scabbard we do have some pleather harnesses and a belt. There are some holes and also there's some weathering around the edges. Underneath that we've got the sculpted rubbery plastic armour. The little rivets being individually painted in metallic silver, this must have been a downright pain to paint. Around the front the same exact thing, a pain to paint, hashtag that. You can see all of the individual rivets, some leather grain textures sculpted into the surface and some stitching around the edges, all fully sculpted of course, this is one hard sculpted rubbery piece of plastic. The shoulder pads are on elastic and some press studs, and for some reason my left one is a little bit more free floating than the right one. This one tends to droop down a touch more, which I don't love. I am thinking I might glue this in position because I want it to flare out a little. The bicep guards are also on elastic, you can adjust these. I like to have them facing the front so you can see all of that detail, and by the way there's leather grain stitching the whole gamut on all of these pieces. Whereas his undershirt is just black fabric, so no worries when it comes to posing. His gauntlets are done in the same way as the rest of the armour. Then around the front, these are the harnesses and belts I was talking about around the back. You have some faux studs glued onto the surface and they do give you spares if these fall off, plus a real metal belt buckle. The Witcher necklace is removable, so if you don't want it there you can totally take it off. Now something that's throwing me off a little is this pleathery style neck gasket cover thing. You can see it sticking out the side which is fine, I can just tuck that on in there, but it rides up more than I thought it would. I wanted to sit down a little bit more so I can see his Adam's apple, so when you have his head sculpt on you can properly see his skin tone neck. It tends to just move its way up when you start to pose him. I might actually just remove it entirely, I'm not sure yet. His pants are made from a very weird feeling material. His thighs are padded underneath them, then this fabric is stretchy. You can see the lines underneath it, the base layer of fabric, and they're soft to the touch, yet they're not sticky at all. I have no idea what these are made of, but I like it and I think it's going to be sturdy enough so you can get more dynamic with the posing. 
The fly is held together with Velcro and these studs are fake, also gold, so a bit of contrast. Then they've hit it with this speckling of dirt and grime. There's a little on the thighs, then as we work our way down to the tops of the boots, they have just absolutely splattered the shit out of his knees. Also around the back there's a little bit of weathering, but mostly around the front. Which makes sense, this would be where he'd be copying the brunt of the damage as he's running around killing all kinds of monsters. His boots are a split cut boot design, thank you Buzz Toys. You can slide the top part up, there's this design work around the top and down the side, some silver painted buckles, some weathering here and there and just a ton of leather grain texture, plus wrinkling. And they haven't just sculpted one then flipped the mould for the other side, these are two unique sculpts, which is a lot of effort, but I do like that they went and did that. On the underside we have some paint, but no sculpted tread. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, on the left, Buzz Toys Netflix Geralt, versus on the right, Witcher 3 Geralt from the video games by Master Team. It's always interesting to see where the design goes from video game to live action. He's not spot on perfect, but he is close enough and he kills it in the role, at least in my opinion. And while there are design similarities with the placement and shape of the shoulder pads and the bicep guards, that's about it. Everything looks significantly different. Not just in shape and design and style, but also in colour. Going from this much more colourful look on the right with the brown and the silver, to straight up black with the rivets, I reckon the Witcher got an upgrade. Going over Geralt's articulation, I have ditched his sword just because I didn't want it to fall out as we're moving the joints around. Starting off with his head sculpt, it's on a fixed but rubbery neck with a double ball peg. Combined looking forward to there, which is more than I was expecting given the sculpted hair, Going back to there, and you can extend it up for slightly more range of motion. Swivel and pivot side to side. The shoulder pads are free floating and on elastic. Then the bicep covers are also on elastic, so none of this stuff should get in our way is what I'm trying to say. The arms will go up to there on soft ratchets, going forward and back. Butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, ratcheted double bend at the elbow going past 90. And then for the wrist peg, it's a hinge and swivel. While the torso is mostly covered with this hard sculpted plastic rubbery armour, he does get a little bit of range, crunching forward and back, swivel, as well as pivot side to side. The legs go forward to there, going out to there on ratchets, surprisingly, swivel at the upper thigh, ratcheted double bend at the knee going past 90, and then the ankles, which are split cut boots and double ball pegs going forward to there, which is a crazy range of motion, going up to there, swivel and just all the ankle tilts. Don't forget to bring the cover back down though, because if you don't, they can look a little bit gappy. Wrapping up on Buzz Toys Netflix Witcher. This guy is very close to being perfect. The only complaint I have, and it is a minor one, it's got to be the length of the legs, the ankle extenders are just too long. They're a little bit loose and they make his legs look way too massive in comparison to the upper torso. If you switch out the ankle extenders and you get yourself a gorgeous diorama style display base, I think this is easily going to be a top 5 figure, at least in my collection. The head sculpts are brilliant, I like both of them. The outfit is mostly fabric, save for the pants and the harness, but I can get around that when it comes to posing, that's fine for me. You get two die cast swords with a ton of detail on them, a real metal chain for his necklace, a bag to hold the swords, and a severed monster arm. This guy is a stacked release. He is that good, and I think he's been worth the wait. It's been a while, we've been waiting for this guy, and finally he is here. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. You might question the proportions with the ankles, that is it though. Everything else, like I have already said over and over and over again, I'm extremely satisfied with. Buzz Toys, well done. But we do need more characters from the show. Please, go ahead and make that happen. But also don't make us wait as long as we had to wait for this guy. Going forward for your future Witcher releases. Now, I got mine as a review sample from Buzz Toys, organised through 1-6 Kit. 
I have popped the link to Kit's website in the description below for your reference purposes only. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe, we'll catch you in the next video.